Sadhguru, we said, we just talked about Vande Matram. Why do we call our country Matram? Why not Patram, Pita? Why Matram? Why it's motherland? Why not fatherland? Why not both? Because uh, though essentially a nation is a people. Yes. But the boundaries and uh, the definition of a nation comes from a land. Yes. A land or earth, we've always seen it as mother. Because if we sow a seed, life comes back at us. Yes. So we see it as a woman. So, almost everywhere except in certain very martial cultures, always nation has been seen as a woman or a mother because it's a, a definition of a defined aspect of geography which makes a nation in a certain sense. Yes. Is that the only reason? When did it begin? <clears throat> I would say it began with this nation because this is the oldest nation on the planet. It defies what people think is a nation today. The modern nations are made. People are making nations based on language, religion, race, ethnicity, maybe a little bit of ideology, one or two. Essentially, it is the sameness of people which makes a nation. But we, as we have known this nation for over eight, ten thousand years as Bharatvars, we have never defiled ourselves with sameness. If you drive fifty kilometers, people look different, wear differently, eat differently, speak different languages, everything is different. So what makes this one nation? When the Europeans came here, they… they went about saying, this country that we have heard about, it doesn't exist. Because there's nothing binding this, how can they say this is a nation? But for our eight, ten thousand years, within this subcontinent and also in the remaining part of the known world of those days, everywhere, People refer to this as one nation, though at some points we were over two hundred political entities. Yes. So what is it that makes this nation? Yes. This is something the leadership in this country and the people of this country must really look at. It is not language, it's not religion, it's not race, because this nationhood predates all religion. When there was no religion, there was this nation. We call this Hindustan. It did not mean representing a particular group of people who belong to a certain religion, it was only a geographical description. The land between Himalayas and the Indus Sarovar is Hindustan. It does not represent a particular religion. We never had a religion. We still don't have. We are struggling to compete with others, but we still don't have. Because this is not a religious identity. This is a geographical and cultural identity. But what kept us together for so long? No nation on the planet has stayed together for so long. It is essentially, if you look at it, we have always been a land of seekers versus people be… When, when we look for sameness, we try to become land, land of believers. People believe in one thing, so they come together. Here, we have been always a land of seekers, seekers of truth and liberation. In this seeking, we found oneness because this seeking is not something that you invented. This is the nature of human intelligence. The nature of human intelligence will naturally want to know, realize and liberate itself. So this nation was built on that fundamental… you cannot even say it's built. At the same time, it has been managed on that fundamental that you are seekers. When you are a seeker, you are not aligned to any one particular thing. It is just that you are aligned to the life process within you and that never goes wrong. Always, every life, it doesn't matter how badly you contaminate them with belief systems, with, you know, brainwashing and whatever you do, still 
an individual, once his survival is taken care of, he seeks to know, he wants to know what is the nature of his existence, what is everything around him. Whether you call it science or spiritual process or enquiry or quest, it doesn't matter what you call it. Essentially, human intelligence wants to know, wants to transcend its present limitations, wants to liberate itself from the fetters in which we are existing right now. So we built a nation on this longing, this seeking, and it cannot be destroyed as long as we keep this seeking alive. If we do not transform ourselves towards sameness, we will always be one. If you try to transform yourself towards belief and sameness, we will not be one. Then was that Bharata? Yes. Is India different? Has India <laughs> changed and changed the Bharata? Was that Bharata? Ba Bharat. Bharat. Bharat means Bharatha, Bhava means sensation because your whole experience of life is sensory right now. What you see, what you hear, what you smell, what you taste, what you touch are different types of sensations. So sensation is the basis of your experience right now. This is the fundamental of your experience. Bhava means sensation, out of which comes emotion. Right. Ra, <coughs> Ra means raga or the tune. The tune is not yours, the existence has already set the tune. You cannot set the tune. Now you have to just find the rhythm which is the tala. If you find the right rhythm, you are a fantastic human being. If you miss the rhythm, you are crushed by the process of life. So we called this nation Bharata and the first or not necessarily the first, one of the great kings of the past was Bharata. People say the country is named after him, no. He is named after the country. There are so many Bharats and Bharatis in this country. Their country is not named after them. They are named after this nationhood. Did we make a mistake then in converting our name from Bharat to India? A serious mistake because you need to understand this. Whenever somebody occupies a nation, any conquering forces, when they take over certain nations, first thing they will do is they'll change your name. Mm. This is the technology of dominance, this is the technology of enslaving. You must see, if you look at the African-American history, when African people were brought in, the first thing is at the port, their names were changed. Whatever they had African names, they were taken away and some silly names will be given. That's what has been done to us. Tiruvananthapuram is Trivandrum, okay? Chennai is Mad Madras. We don't know whether we're mad or we're rascals <laughs> Like this, India, what does it mean? It doesn't mean anything. So if I give you a meaningless name, you will become a meaningless stupid person in front of me because I have a meaningful name, I have a tradition, I have a culture, you have nothing. So in that context, we have become India. This is the first thing because the concept of a nation must sink into everybody's mind. Yes. Because nation is just an idea. When this idea burns through, your, burns through your mind and sinks into your heart and your passion is risen towards that, then you have a real nation. Otherwise, nation is just in the paper. This is the unfortunate reality for us right now. So, at least when they left in 1947, the first thing we should have done is change the name in such a way that it resonates in some way in everybody's mind. Now you, you… you are using an English name for an Indian nation. Hardly two, three percent of, our, of us can speak English language in this country properly, okay? The remaining people are essentially left out. I think this is one thing I would like to request the present Prime Minister. We must rename this country in a way it reverberates in everybody's hearts. Wow, wow, wow. Mm. I know a whole lot of uh, intellectual crowd will say, what is in a name? Yes. Okay, call yourself Tobu, <laughs> call yourself Momo. People are doing that. Yes. I am not saying… I am not against anything. All I am saying is, when you utter your name, you must understand there is sound. Whatever we utter is only a sound. The meaning is only a psychological thing, a social thing. Right now if I say Kiran, it's only a sound. The meaning is psychological and social, leave the meaning of it. The sound is existential and it has a power. Bharat has power. That's this power has to reverberate through everybody's hearts in this country. 
And the idea of what it means to be an Indian, the fundamental concept, five things you must know about being an Indian, this must get across to every human being. Because if every human being who live this, lives in this country, if his aspirations are not the same as the national aspiration, then you don't have a nation, you just have names. It is… it is not just that the name will do everything. Name has to inspire passion in people for the nation. Yes. Right now, they have only hormonal passions going. There's no passion for the nation. Yes. Okay? Yes. So that is why what is happening to the woman is happening. Yes. So, uh, it is not that a name is a solution for everything, but nationhood. Why nationhood is important is, why can't we think about the whole world? We can. But nationhood is the largest piece of humanity that you can be committed to right now. That's why a nation is important. When we say you are committed to this nation and its well-being, that means at least if not 7.2 billion people, at least you are committed to 1.2 billion… Uh, 1.25 billion people, which is a great step yes. from being committed to your own personal well-being. Yes. So in that sense, nature… nation is important. As a spiritual being for me, I am not a nationalistic person that way. I would like to look at every, every human being and every creature on this planet the same way, that's how I am. But nation is important because the scope of one's passion, involvement and concern has expanded beyond likes and dislikes of two people sitting here. I think with the return, as we notice, return of Hindi much more in the last ten days, Hindi has returned much more. So we might hear Bharatwasi much more. Bharatiya much more. You're leaving us out, we are from the south. Then you learn a little bit of Hindi then. <laughs> no, <laughs> you won't. <laughs> you won't? No. Why? That is why I'm telling you, it is not the sameness which binds us. We are different people, but we are fine together. That is the nation, that is the nature of this country. That is what has to be encouraged. Okay. You don't try to teach everybody Hindi. You don't try to teach everybody Tamil. I speak Tamil, you speak this thing, you eat paratha but I eat idli, I think that's the best thing, you think that is the best thing, it doesn't matter. But we have no issues. In the same family you can work, five people are there, they're worshipping five different gods, but no problem, in the same room. I don't see an imposition, I see more of a promotion, that, that's what I feel. That… that will happen anyway. Uh, um, we are in a cusp, where are we are in a position today, we've got… we've got a decisive mandate, I'm not being political, but that's a political reality today. We have a decisive and mandate today. Where does this mandate begin from? And where do we all fall in? Where do we fall in place? Because you being… this is being webcasted and millions of people are watching you all over the world as Indians. I think we've got two responsibilities. One is a people's responsibility, I've decided the other is a leader's. from now on I will not use the word Indian. Why? Yeah, I would like to use the word Bharat. I told you, Hindi <laughs> is coming in. I have started the moment. That's the Hindi name of India anyway. No, it is… Hindustan. A, it, it, we also call it Hindustan. Yes, uh, actually Hindustan describes the geography, Bharat describes the culture. Right. I think a time has come nice. where… Uh, where our identity has to be cultural because culture is inclusive, this is something we must understand. When uh, his seven sages who are now considered uh, the celebrated Saptarishis of this country, you must understand this first of all, the greatness of this nation is in pursuit and accomplishment of spiritual dimensions. It is this spiritual thread which is holding the country together, this longing to know. If you hack it, then you will… you cannot maintain the sovereignty of this country, believe me. It's, is it religion? It is not religion. No? No, I'm… I'm telling you, the nationhood, what we call as Bharat, predates all religion. So when Adi Yogi was asked by the seven sages, how many ways can we attain? He said, if you use your physical body as a foundation, there are one hundred and twelve ways of realizing the divine. But if you transcend the physical body, 
then as many atoms there are in the universe, that many doorways are there. Do you call this a religion? No. Religion means that you believe this is it. And unfortunately, religious teachings, a whole lot of religious te teachings do not believe in nationhood. They do not believe in the fundamental existence of a nation. Now, this is not about going with somebody, for somebody, no. First of all, we must decide, are we a nation? If we are, the idea of a nation should, should be burnt into everybody's head. How? Where do we begin from? Schooling, of course. With the teachers with no general knowledge? <laughs> you can train them in a summer. Who trains them? Th this is what needs determination in the leadership, that's what I'm saying. What is this country? See, I must tell you this. The United States of America, in the twenties particularly, when a whole lot of Italians and others, particularly Italians, a lot of them moving to United States, now they speak their own language, they eat their own food, they are among themselves, they will not mix with the so-called American thing because their culture they think is richer, they are they're somewhat, you know, like a exuberant population like India at that time, so they won't mix. So the US government did something which is amazing, which today I'm sure a whole lot of uh, intellectuals will brand this as fascist, but they'll all queuing up to go to United States, of course. <laughs> US government made posters. For Germans, one kind of posters, for Italians, one kind of posters, Jewish people, another kind of posters. Within the kitchen of every home, they must fix this poster, okay? It's a government release poster wow. where an Italian housewife, how she should serve an American breast breakfast every day in the morning, how she should be dressed, how the table should be set, what should be for breakfast. For lunch, dinner, you can eat Italian, but breakfast should be American. Wow. You understand? I am saying this may sound fascist, yes. but it is with this they integrated different ways. I am saying even something so small as what you are eating for breakfast, the government is looking at it because they're interested in making a nation. Wow. I was amazed. I saw it, that poster is still with me somewhere. I was amazed to see that somebody went into such elaborateness of putting people together. If you'd left them like that, they would all be separate, separate nations within a nation and fighting with each other. Absolutely. Whatever is said and done, America is such a melting pot, but one nation, you know.